Hey everybody, it's Jack and Ollie here with you. And in this video, we're going to be talking about knee osteoarthritis and answering some commonly asked questions that we hear about knee osteoarthritis. And then at the end, what we're going to do is show you some great exercises that we think load up the joint appropriately for you to get better at everyday tasks such as squatting and lunging. So listen up and we'll take you through all that information now. Okay, so what is knee osteoarthritis? Well, of course, it's a very common condition, especially in the older age groups. It's a condition that affects primarily the cartilage by reducing the amount and size of the cartilage that we have, but it also affects other structures around the joint like connective tissue, the bone, and even sometimes the muscle that works on that joint. Absolutely, and what does it present like? What we often see is you may get more stiffness in the morning and this tends to warm up with more movement and you often get pain during movement. Movement such as squatting, lunging down to the ground, potentially going downstairs or downhill is often quite aggravating. And lastly, we would probably see a reduced range of motion in some people, not always, but potentially. So given that knee osteoarthritis is such a common condition, it's important that we're aware of the treatments that are out there. Now, there's a lot of treatments that don't have the scientific backing to support their use. The first of those are arthroscopic surgeries where a surgeon goes in and cleans up a joint. Now, they've actually done studies comparing a sham surgery where they only make the incision and not the actual procedure versus an arthroscopic surgery. And those who have the sham surgery over the long term actually perform just as well or sometimes even better than those who have had the arthroscopic surgery. Okay, so important to note that whenever you're recommended that sort of surgery. The second type of treatment that doesn't have great evidence supporting it is herbal remedies like turmeric and those sorts of supplements. Not great evidence there. And then lastly, a lot of passive treatments don't have great backing from the science. So things like TENS, massage, even acupuncture, these things can often make us feel relaxed and give us short-term pain relief, but they don't improve the outcomes that we are after. Okay, so we've talked about some of the treatments which have weak evidence. Now let's talk about some of the treatments which have strong evidence behind them. So in 2018, the Royal Australian College of General Practitioners put out a really big set of guidelines detailing all these treatments. They, they took the best evidence from all around the world and basically the three top things for knee osteoarthritis for treatment which came out was education, weight loss and exercise. So in terms of education, that's what you're doing right now. You're educating yourself more about the condition and we'll go more into this when we talk about pain as well because we think that's really important to know about. In terms of weight loss, we know that with a 5% reduction in body weight, you can have significant improvements in your pain levels and function. So that's really good to know. Now, we're not gonna tell you how to lose weight in this one, but it is something you should be considering if you are overweight. And thirdly is exercise. Now, in terms of exercise, we think whatever exercise is tolerable for you is probably the best thing to do. But in terms of the evidence, the evidence falls to land-based exercise. Okay, whether that's aerobic exercise such as swimming, running or riding, but more of that running and riding, so the land-based exercise or resistance training. And we're going to talk about, or actually show you some really good exercises that you can use, use in your strength training. Okay, so before we show you those four exercises, which we think load up the knee really well, we just wanna talk a little bit about pain during and after exercise. So Oli, take us away, mate. Okay, so pain is incredibly common with exercise, especially when you're starting a new program, regardless of whether you've got knee osteoarthritis or not. Now, the important thing to note is that pain is not a reliable indicator of tissue damage, as Jack's gonna talk a little bit about in a moment. So as long as the pain is tolerable and it doesn't affect the rest of of your 24 hours, the rest of your day, doesn't impact on your uh, daily living tasks. It's important that you persist with the exercise because we know that it's got a range of great benefits like improving your symptoms, improving your function, and of course, improving your health. 
Absolutely. So Ollie was speaking before about pain not being a reliable indicator of tissue damage. And we can show this really clearly through x-rays of the knee. Okay, so we might have clients who have lots of uh, damage in the knee when it comes to x-rays. So it shows a great thinning of the joint. Some of those people don't have pain at all. Mm. Okay, they might have some other symptoms such as reduced strength and range of motion, but pain is very low in those clients. And then you might get another 50% of people who do have very high amount of pain but very low amounts of perceivable damage in the x-ray so once again pain is not a reliable marker of tissue damage as long as the pain is tolerable or the discomfort is tolerable we're happy for you to continue the exercise okay so now we're going to show you four exercises that we think really build good strength and capacity around the knee so just keep in mind, like we just spoke about, that when you first start off these exercises, if they are new to you, you may find some pain and discomfort during and after the exercise. Now, once again, that's completely normal, and we're gonna to try to show you some different ways to work around that so that you can have more tolerance in the exercise. Absolutely. Now, with all these exercises, we want you to start with uh, a weight that you can handle for 12 to 15 repetitions. So a nice light weight, preferably for starters, we can always go up from there. But we want you working to fatigue or until you've got two or three repetitions left in the tank, just making sure once again that your symptoms are tolerable and they're not going beyond what you would classify as that. Absolutely, now just keep in mind that could be just your body weight, so not holding any weight, but once again, we do want you to gradually and progressively load up that exercise. Yep. Okay, so let's show you our first one, the sit to stand. Okay, Ollie, let's jump into the sit to stand or squat. So it is a squatting movement. So we'll call it a sit to stand or a squat. Yeah. So a sit to stand, sitting and standing from a chair would probably be the most basic variation of a squat we could do or this squatting pattern. Okay, so all we're going to do is sit down and simply stand up. Okay, there's not much to this one. You don't want to overthink things. All we're trying to do is get our shoulders over our shoelaces when we stand up and when we sit down. So shoulders forward, bum back. Nice and easy. Now, some people might find this a little bit intolerable at that height, for example. Let's just say you're standing out of a low chair or off a low bench. So what you can do is you can chuck a pillow underneath your bottom. That might be a little bit of an easier way to do that. And now you're reducing that range of motion, okay, that your knee has to go through, and this you may find a little bit more tolerable. Any other tips there, mate? Now, if you've tried the cushion and it's still really bothering your knees, mm -hmm. you definitely can bring the arms in just to make it a little easier. So the first thing to do would be to put your hands on your knees just to give you a little bit of arm support on the way up, yeah. okay? Of course, you can use arm rests, but try to avoid using those because it takes a lot of the load away from your thigh muscles, which is the primary muscles we're trying to work here. Absolutely. Now, when you want to add weight, then you can either hold it on your chest or put a backpack on it, Absolutely. as we're going to do in some of the other exercises here. Now, if you can do a sit to stand fairly easily, we would much prefer you to do a squat. Okay, so we'll just show you a body weight squat first. Go for it, mate. Beautiful. Just like that, and you can obviously once again add weight by holding it on the front or on the back. Now with the squat, the main things to recognize are finding a nice comfortable stance for you. It might be narrower, might be wider, and as you go down, you wanna drop your bottom down in between your heels. Do you wanna just show them that again, Ollie? So Ollie's dropping his bottom down in between his heels, trying to maintain a big puffy chest, okay? One thing we want to see with this is you driving your knees out. So we don't want to see your knees coming in. It's very inefficient, okay? And it means you probably won't be able to squat as deeply. So keeping the knees over the toes. And once again, you can modify the depth if you're getting a lot of symptoms doing a deeper squat, okay? Okay, excellent. Let's move on to our second exercise, the glute bridge. Okay, so the glute bridge is a great exercise for working those muscles in the backs of our thighs and our buttocks which are really important for your knee health, yep. okay? So what I'm gonna have Jack do is lie down on the floor for today's purposes, but of course you can do this one on a bed or a couch if you have trouble getting down to the floor, okay? So Jack's lying on his back, he's got his knees bent up to about 90 degrees, all right? From here, all he's going to do is lift his hips up off the floor by pushing down through his feet, lovely. Show us a couple of repetitions of that one, Jack. 
Excellent. One more. Beautiful. Okay, so once again, doing about 15 repetitions of that, that's far too easy. There's a couple of things we can do. The first thing would be to elevate the feet, make it a little bit more challenging by increasing the range of motion. Okay, so we've got the step there. You can see Jack's up on his feet on the step. And the same principles apply, lifting the hips up into the air by contracting the glute and hamstring muscles in the backs of our legs. Love it. Any tips for that, Jack? Yeah, mate. I would say if you really want to make it a lot higher, you could obviously come over to something like a chair. Okay. Imagine this being a chair or a bench, and you can do it up there, and that would be a lot harder. Now, if this, once again, is far too easy for you, you could do a single leg. Yep. Okay. You can do that on the ground, on the step, or on the bench. But a single leg is going to be significantly harder. Yep. Beautiful. Okay, so that's a really good exercise once again for fatiguing the back of the leg and the glutes there. And just keep in mind that obviously the ways to make it harder is that single leg variation or increasing the height that you're coming up to. Okay, a pretty simple exercise, not too much to explain for that one. Okay, um, but really good for making you nice and fatigued. Yeah. Probably can't add too much weight to that one, I would say. It's a little tricky. Okay, yeah, absolutely. And just play around with your foot positioning. So walking your feet out or bringing them closer in to see if that makes the movement more tolerable, perhaps. Yeah. Okay, so let's move on to our third exercise, mate. The step up. Okay, so let's take them through the step up. Really simple, okay? <laughs> I'll bring that over there for you, mate. We can switch over here. So as you can see, we've got a step and we're just going to be stepping up, okay? So nice and simple, incredible, incredibly functional, I should say, as a daily task. A lot of people find stepping up and down the steps hard if they do have knee osteoarthritis, okay? So not really any tips for this one, I would say. If you do need some hand assistance at first, that might be a way to make it more tolerable. And you might wanna pick a height of step which you find tolerable once again. So if it's really high, that might be too hard to start. Now we highly recommend loading this exercise up. So if you can do 15 on each side for three sets really easily just with your body weight, we would recommend Probably grabbing a bag. So Ollie could chuck that bag on. We'd be loading that up with books gradually. So let's just say Ollie has five kilos in the bag, straps that to him, and once again, he goes for that step up. Okay, doing 15 each side. Now over time, what he can do is gradually load up that bag more and more if it is tolerable and he doesn't have too many symptoms, okay? And that will make him stronger in that movement. Yeah, okay. so a really good exercise for training that movement of going up and down stairs and desensitizing the knee joint to that sort of load, which is gonna be really good for, once again, improving your function, but hopefully also reducing the symptoms you experience going upstairs. Absolutely, mate. What is our very last exercise that we're gonna show everyone today? Our last exercise is gonna be a little bit trickier than some of the others. It's going to be a lunge. So okay. let's get into it. All right, so the lunge is challenging similar muscles, mm -hmm. the quadriceps and the glutes, but what we're gonna do is challenge one leg at a time, okay? So what I'm gonna have Jack do is demonstrate the exercise and then we'll talk through a couple of tips. Okay, mate, so I'm gonna go through a full lunge first, okay? So there's no range of motion restriction here. Okay, so a full lunge, lovely, both legs. You can see Jack's taking his knee all the way down to the floor, okay? Now, while that's ideal, it definitely will not be tolerable for a lot of people, especially when they're just starting out. So what we would have you do is just do a shallower version of that movement. So from the side, Jack's gonna show you a slightly easier modification. Beautiful. Okay, so you can see that his knee is getting nowhere near the ground, okay? But we're still challenging the same muscles, hopefully just in a more tolerable and uh, less threatening way. Absolutely, and as I get better, I can obviously increase the range yes. of motion by just going a little bit lower. And you can do this week by week, okay? It doesn't have to be every session going lower. It could be every week, just going that little bit lower. Absolutely. Okay. Now, the other way is true too. If even that shallower movement is too challenging for you, you can, of course, hold on to a chair or a rail just to give you, once again, a little bit more support and hopefully make it a little more tolerable. Absolutely. 
Yeah, so there's a couple of different ways to modify it, okay? Just going a little bit lower or holding onto something for support. But often this is quite provocative at first, so just really take your time with this movement. But one of the big benefits of training that movement, especially when you're getting right down to the floor, yep. is of course your floor mobility or that ability to get down, okay, all the way down to the floor and then back up again, which is often something that we hear is very hard to do when you have knee osteoarthritis. So persist with that exercise, even if it's a little challenging at first, and hopefully you can re reap all those good benefits. Absolutely. Okay, so those are four good exercises for loading up the knee to make it stronger and more capable in everyday life. So we ran you through the sit to stand or the squat. Okay, we had the glute bridge, the step up, and lastly, the lunge. Four really good exercises. Now, as Ollie said before, start with the weight which you can tolerate, okay, and that you can handle, and just do 12 to 15 repetitions for three sets and just have a little bit of a rest in between each yeah. set, okay? Anything to add there, mate? I think just monitor the symptoms that you're getting over the next 24 to 48 hours, especially when you're starting out. Yeah. It's much better to start off too easy and then leave exactly. yourself room to, to build upon rather than going too hard out of the gate and having to take backward steps and ending up with a lot of pain and discomfort. Absolutely, and I think we just summarize to say that just remember that pain does not necessarily equal tissue damage and that you will probably get some discomfort and pain during the exercise, but that's normal. And if you don't continue, you're probably losing some precious gains you could be making in making your knee you know, more capable and stronger for everyday tasks. Absolutely. So we hope you enjoyed this tutorial on knee osteoarthritis and get something out of these four exercises we showed you. And we look forward to seeing you in our next video. See you guys.